share on Pinterest what is it? Generally speaking, a labiaplasty does to your vertical lips what a barber does to your split ends, also known as vaginal rejuvenation. Labiaplasty is a plastic surgery procedure that involves modifying the labia minora, inner lips, and or the labia majora, outer lips. A labiaplasty is most often performed on the labia minora, the folds closest to the clitoris, to create a tucked-in appearance, explains board-certified anti-aging expert drive. Sophia Din, author of Do We Really Need Botox? A Handbook of Anti-Aging What are the reasons some vulva owners are taking the blade to their bits? And what does the procedure involve? Here are the facts. Why is it done? Know this, there is a HUGE range of what qualifies as a normal labia length and look. Sometimes the inner labia are longer than the outer labia. Sometimes the outer are longer than the inner, sometimes they're symmetrical, sometimes they're shaped in a way that the clitoris is visible, other times not, and so forth. Drive Din likens labia to earlobes, just as no two lobes have the same thickness, length, or color, no two vulvas and labias are the same. For visual evidence of this, she recommends checking out the labia library in the Great Wall of Vagina. A labiaplasty can be performed if or when someone's labia are too long. Or when someone thinks their labia are too long. Is it ever medically necessary? Drive. Din is quick to call out that for most people labiaplasty isn't medically necessary. Rather. It's a cosmetic procedure they elect to have because they've decided that a smaller or shorter labia minora is desirable. She suspects this is the result of cultural messaging and media. Mainly, mainstream porn. However, yes, sometimes it is medically necessary. Dr. Norman M. Rowe, a board-certified plastic surgeon says it's considered medically necessary if your labia gets sucked or tucked into the vagina during sex. This can result in painful tears in the vulva skin. Same goes if things like wearing underwear or a bath suit, walking, running, biking, or even sitting are painful or irritate or chafe the vulva skin. Some folks are born with longer labia, but Dr. Heather J. Furness, Facts Notes that childbirth and simply getting older can also result in labia elongation, making the procedure necessary later in life. How common is it? The American Society of Plastic Surgeons, ASPS, reports that around 10,000 labiaplasty procedures are done each year. For a sense of comparison, the same data shows that about 215,000 people get rhinoplasties, nose jobs, a year and 300,000 people get breast augmentations, boob jobs, each year. Is there anyone who shouldn't get one? You should be in good health before going under the knife. So, anyone who has a pre-existing disease likely shouldn't get one. Dr. Furness adds, the patient should also be in good psychological condition. A patient who is focusing on millimeters of perfection will never be happy and isn't a good surgical candidate. While plastic surgery is a personal choice, in my opinion, most vulva owners should not get one because their vulvas are normal and beautiful the way they are, says Drive, Tim. Are there any potential risks? Anytime you go under the knife, there are risks, says Drive, Tim. Here, the main risks include. Decreased vulvar sensitivity chronic dryness numbness scarring that results in painful vaginal sex The ASPS notes that risks also include bleeding, hematoma, and infection. While some vulva owners elect to have a drastic reduction in labia length, if the labia are over-resected, or too much skin is removed, it can prevent the labia from doing their job, protecting the vaginal opening. As a result, it may become easier for things to get inside the vagina and throw of the pH balance, explains Drive. Ro. This could result in more vaginal infections. Are the results guaranteed?
Most labiaplasties do as they're intended to do, shorten the labia, so folks who elect to get the procedure because their OG labia were getting twisted, tugged, or tearing will find relief, says Drive. Furnace. These patients often call the surgery life-changing, she says. According to a 2014 study, 91% of people who had the procedure felt more satisfied with their genital appearance afterwards and concluded that labiaplasty is effective in improving genital appearance and sexual satisfaction. Worth adding, the procedure is still new enough that there's no data on how things like menopause and childbirth affect the results obtained by the labiaplasty. How can you find a reputable provider? Both plastic surgeons and gynecologists perform labiaplasties. Generally speaking, a gynecologist should be your first stop because they'll be able to talk to you about whether or not your labia are normal, and if not, they're better suited to talk to you about all your options. From there, they'll be able to connect you with someone who regularly performs labiaplasties, if they don't themselves. People who perform labiaplasty regularly have before and after photos on their website, which I recommend checking out, Drive. Furnace says, do you need to do anything to prepare? In addition to taking off work and making sure your loosest panties are laundered and ready for wear, you should get plenty of sleep, eat healthy, and drink plenty of water in the days leading up to the procedure. How is it done? There are two main types of procedures to address the labia minora, edge resection and wedge resection, both of which are usually done under anesthesia. Edge resection involves trimming the excess protruding edges of the labia, the way you trim your hair during a haircut, for instance. Wedge resection maintains the original labia ledges by cutting wedge-shaped slivers of skin out of the center of the labia minora, bringing the remaining skin together with dissolvable sutures. Procedures to address the labia majora typically go one of two ways cutting out tissue or using liposuction on labia that are longer or fuller than desired injecting fat or other filler material to plump labia that aren't as full as desired what can you expect from aftercare and recovery. It's usually an outpatient procedure, meaning you get to recuperate at home. But that doesn't mean the procedure isn't a big one. In fact, drive. Furnace says the labia will be pretty sore and swollen after, drive. DIN advises folks to take at least 3 to 7 days off work. Most doctors will prescribe antibiotics to reduce the risk of infection and anti-inflammatories to reduce pain. In the case that anti-inflammatory meds aren't prescribed, OTC anti-inflammatories are recommended. People recovering from the procedure are usually advised to wear loose clothing to avoid friction and excessive pain, take salt or sitz baths to relieve soreness, avoid exercise and rigorous activities, abstain from tampon use and sex for at least four to six weeks. The ASPS notes that you can also reduce pain and swelling by laying with your bottom elevated to reduce swelling. You can also place an ice pack over your underwear 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off increments. While most swelling will be gone after 6 weeks, residual swelling may take 6 months to disappear, according to the ASPS. Is a follow-up appointment necessary? Yep. Usually you'll have one or two follow-ups so your doctor can make sure the area is healing well. Is there anything else you should know before scheduling a consultation? Dr. Din says anyone considering a labiaplasty needs to know there are other options for either altering the length of their labia or how they feel about the length. A few options below. Spend time looking at other folks' vulvas. Watching indie queer, and alternative porn, which are known for featuring more body, and vulva, types, may help you realize how normal your vulva really is, she says. Let your pubes grow out. The rise in the number of folks seeking labiaplasties coincides with number of folks getting Brazilian wax and all bear down their look. When you remove the hair you become more aware of the appearance of what's usually hidden by hair. 
Trying out a new hairstyle may help you feel more confident about your vulva. Get a no shot. A no shot involves taking blood from other parts of your body and injecting it into the clitoris. For folks who are interested in getting a labiaplasty because the labia is interfering with sexual arousal, drive. Din says this is a great alternative. Bonus, recovery is only a day or two compared to four to six weeks. Talk to a therapist. It's not uncommon for vulva owners who dislike their labia to dislike, or even hate, other parts of their body as well. If this sounds like you, working with a therapist who specializes in body dysmorphia may be helpful. Stop sleeping with anyone contributing to labia shame. There are ignorant, obnoxious people out there who don't have vulvas, who make their partners feel embarrassed about the look of their vulvas, says Drive. Jill McDevitt, Cal Exotics resident sexologist. If you have a partner making you feel that way, don't FCK them. Join a Love Your Vulva Challenge. Yes, this is an actual 10-day course, offered by Drive. McDevitt, designed to help people experience genital joy. The bottom line are your labia interfering with the quality of your life? Talk to a healthcare provider about whether they think you're a good candidate for a labiaplasty. But if you're interested in a labiaplasty because you think your labia don't look like how they're supposed to look, know that it's exceedingly unlikely that your labia are abnormal. Gabrielle Castle is a New York-based sex and wellness writer and CrossFit Level 1 trainer. She's become a morning person, tested over 200 vibrators, and eaten, drunk, and brushed with charcoal, all in the name of journalism. In her free time, she can be found reading self-help books and romance novels, bench pressing, or pole dancing. Follow her on Instagram.